um, very good afternoon, everyone. And so today I'll be presenting to you a new material that is called Black Phosphorus. Yeah, okay, sorry. So, um, yeah, so today I'll be introduced, uh, introducing to you a new two-dimensional material, also known as Black Phosphorus. Uh, but before that, first let me briefly introduce to you what uh, 2D material research is about. So since the discovery of graphene in 2004, using the scotch tape method, many material scientists have revisited layered materials such as TND, HBN, as well as hexenes, and also probably increased the sales of scotch tape worldwide. <laughs> and um, so what uh, is so interesting about 2D materials is that the single uh, layer and few layer properties of these 2D materials are very different from the bulk. And these are just some examples which you might have uh, already seen some commercial products of, about them. And uh, on the top left, we can see that uh, because these materials are atomically thin, they actually are more transparent. So they can be used in transparent electronics. And also they have a high strain tolerance, so they can be used in flexible electronics as well, as we have seen, some, uh, seen in some curved television. And also another interesting thing about these materials is that their optical properties are actually uh, layer dependent. And what this means is that uh, just by changing the number of layers, it can absorb a light of different wavelength. And so if we put a combination of these uh, layered materials together, they can absorb uh, a huge percentage of the incoming solar radiation. And so it can be used in energy harvesting uh, applications like solar cells. And also because of their large uh, surface area to volume ratio, they can be used in high capacity energy storage applications. And uh, not only that, because they are atomically thin, so uh, as uh, Sokmoy has highlighted, um, devices fabricated uh, based on 2D materials can be miniaturized without any adverse effects. And the table below summarizes some of the properties of commonly studied 2D materials. And uh, one of the main indicators used to evaluate the device performance is the device mobility. So the mobility tells us how fast the carriers in a device actually travel. And so the higher the mobility, uh, the better is the device. And at one glance, we can see that graphene has a whooping high 200,000 uh, mobility. And as a reference, uh, our current state-of-the-art silicon transistors have a mobility of 1,400. So it is pretty impressive. However, graphene has a huge fatal flaw. So graphene itself has no band gap since it's a uh, semi-metal. And what this means is that if we fabricate a device based on graphene, it can never be switched off. And this is pretty bad, right? Because you'll be wasting a lot of power. And so material scientists have uh, been researching on other layered materials that have band gaps. And more recently, uh, it has been theoretically predicted that phosphorine, which is a single layer of black phosphorus, have a high theoretical mobility of 10,000 to 26,000, which is uh, pretty high. So actually, black phosphorus has been discovered for more than uh, 100 years. But who knew that this pile of black dust can have such a high mobility when it's only a single layer? And that's why uh, recently we can see a surge in a number of publications regarding black phosphorus. And so how does black phosphorus compare with state-of-the-art silicon transistors? We can have a look at this uh, graph. And so we can see that actually it fares pretty well, given that it has only been researched for the past three to five years. And not only that, black phosphorus has a strong layer-dependent property in its optical. So it can actually absorb light across a huge uh, range of wavelength just by changing the number of layer. And this is the same for the emission. And so what this implies uh, is that uh, if we have a single piece of uh, black phosphorus and we make the device, uh, just using black phosphorus alone, we can fabricate light-activated uh, devices such as photodetectors as well as solar cells, and also light-emitting devices like LEDs. Uh, which span across the wavelength of uh, near infrared all the way to the visible spectrum. And so actually this uh, comprises a huge part of our solar radiation. And so, uh, so much about the advantages of black phosphorus. So um, there's actually a major issue of this material. Uh, although it's theoretically predicted that when black phosphorus gets thinner, the performance should become better, but this is not true. So we can see that the device mobility actually falls to a single digit value when it's only a few layers thick. And so this is far from the theoretically predicted value of 20,000. And why is this so? 
If we take a look at the image of a freshly prepared black phosphorus, we can already see many nanobubbles forming on the surface, which is an early sign of oxidation. And we just put this black phosphorus in air for a few days, we can see it has already degraded into a puddle of phosphoric acid. And quantitative analysis also shows that the degradation rate of black phosphorus in air follows a first order initial, which is very, very fast. And so what our group has done uh, previously was uh, we invented a new method by confining a chemical reaction in between uh, 2D materials. And we have found that uh, using a hydrogenation method, we can stabilize a large class of uh, TMDs, which is another 2D material. And uh, the chemical reaction is upscalable as it's very simple. We just need a lithium source and then we intercalate the lithium in the material and then we hydrogenate it. And what is interesting is uh, that when we apply this uh, treatment to black phosphorus, we can actually see that the adjacent layer of black phosphorus decouple. And so when we have a bulk uh, material of black phosphorus, it actually behaves like a single layer. So we have measured the optical response of our prepared black phosphorus devices and materials. And we can see that uh, we can actually control the number of layers of this uh, material, but it is a bulk material. And the most important point uh, of um, uh, most important uh, drawback of black phosphorus is the stability. So of course we will have to evaluate the stability of our chemically treated black phosphorus material. And we can see that the quanti from the quantitative analysis that our chemically treated black phosphorus remains very stable in the air for up to a period of 30 days and still counting. And uh, we can see from the atomic force microscopy images that the surface is still very smooth compared to the controlled. Uh, Control study that uh, there are many uh, net protrusions on the surface uh, just after three days already. And then we also evaluate the device performance, which is uh, the main uh, uh, the main component of our paper. So we fabricate the many of such uh, devices in a hallbar configuration, and these are the typical transport measurement uh, curves of the control experiment as well as our treated uh, black phosphorus. And uh, from this, we can extract the mobility values, which is summarized in the figure D. So we can see that the mobility of our devices actually the averages out to be about 800, which is uh, pretty good. And uh, not only that, it can actually perform in ambient conditions, under operational conditions, for up to 18 days and counting. And the control uh, pristine devices, you can see that they actually start to fail just after one day, and they die just after two days. And then we take a look at how our devices fare in comparison with the other black phosphorus uh, devices. So we can see that uh, we have actually fabricated the thinnest effective sheet thickness uh, black phosphorus devices. And the mobility is also uh, relatively high. And we are the only one that uh, report on the highly stable uh, black phosphorus devices without the need for encapsulation. So the thing about encapsulation using uh, another 2D material is that this method is uh, not scalable, so it cannot be commercialized. And uh, in summary, uh, I have shown to you that uh, black phosphorus is a promising material that could replace our current silicon technology. And although uh, theoretically the performance should increase as this material gets thinner, but we know that this is not true, due to the extreme uh, uh, instability of black phosphorus in air. And using our method, we have also been able to uh, stabilize this material and we fabricate devices. These devices have a, a good mobility that compares against the bulk silicon. And not only that, uh, interestingly, we can actually obtain tunable optical and electronic properties uh, just based on the bulk material itself. And the most importantly, these materials are highly stable without the need for further encapsulation. Okay, and uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, I would like to acknowledge the following people as well as NGS for their support and guidance.